Hello and welcome to Deconstructed, a show where we take a watch mojo list, break it down, and kind of figure out why things place what they did. This week, to honor Marvel's 10-year uh, cinematic universe achievement, we are breaking down our top 10 Avengers from all the way back in 2014. So let's take a look at that original ranking. back in 2014 when we ranked this, a lot of these characters hadn't been introduced in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so we based it heavily on their appearances and their origins in the comics. So to help me out to break this down, I have two very special guests, Justin and Andrew. Justin, you are a resident comic book nerd of Watch Mojo. That's right. That's what they get me here to talk comics. And Andrew, you seem to be I a challenge that. regular Fair. nerd here at Watch Mojo. So... Guys, you ready to break this down? Always. I am so freaking ready. All right, let's do it. So in at number 10, we got Black Panther. And just to clarify, the stills we're using here are to honor the 10 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Since all these characters have now been introduced, we're going to use their still from the movies. So number 10, Black Panther. How do we feel? Justin? I think that's a pretty fair spot for T'Challa, the king of Wakanda. Uh, you know, in the Avengers, comics. He was introduced in the Fantastic Four, was relatively quickly introduced into the Avengers after a couple of issues of not having him as the as the part of the team. But once he came aboard, he is a very powerful member, having, you know, the resources of an entire country on his back. Uh, and in that history, a lot of his backstory has been unveiled in the pages of the Avengers as well. So I think he's kind of an essential member at this point. And I think more the way the Avengers kind of take, uh, the Avengers get together and they always try to conquer like a global threat, mm -hmm. more than just something that's very niche in one city. That's where the characters kind of stand alone. So I feel like that is a good breeding ground for them to kind of bring in the more international characters. Andrew, your thoughts? I see you making but some faces over there. Does that make him an Avenger? Like, I agree he's a fantastic character, but okay, look, I got uh, the Marvel Encyclopedia. I brought a ton of Avengers <laughs> comics from home, from all of the different, from tons of different eras, <laughs> right? And you know what? Black Panther isn't in any of these because he's too busy being the king of Wakanda. Mm. He's like, yes, he does exist in some Avengers comics. I didn't have any. He exists as an Avenger, but he's not an Avenger in the MCU yet. And you know what? The only time I could actually find any kind of evidence of him being an Avenger I want you, is in my I want Marvel the commenters cards. and viewers at home to watch that Andrew whipped out trading cards. Uh, yeah. Something I haven't seen in a good like 20 years. So good no, on you that you have trading cards. That's how far back I go. And yeah, this, that is is the only, good this is research. the only thing I could find that says affiliation Avengers for Black Panther. So either he shouldn't be on this list at all, or he should be a lot higher than 10. Hmm. You know, that's that's the only thing I'll settle for. So he's either all in or not in at all. Exactly. Pretty because much that's how, how he is in the comic is. books. Yeah. Well, I feel, like, I feel like just because when we get down low into the list, we start to get to the essential members, founding members, and like people who are kind of so entwined with the Avengers core that they don't have that kind of leeway of like, we're going to go off and, you know, take care of a country. Tony Stark has never been the king of anything. Uh, but I... I king of everything, I think. Oh, fair in enough, the, yeah. yeah. In, his own, in his own unique way. He's in the, the cinematic king. universe, yeah. seems to be the king of everything. I think the, that when T'Challa was introduced into the Avengers series in the, probably was around the mid-60s, I would say, it became quick to see the value that he brought to the team. And I think for that reason, having him just outside those core members is exactly where he belongs. I think Andrew's referencing his book. Flipping uh, through. I hope this is about our number nine entry because we're going to get this okay, thing going. Okay, let's move on then. Let's move on to number nine. <laughs> okay, so coming in at number nine is The Wasp. I have a commenter here by the name of Kay Kurono. The Wasp is number nine because she's the one that gave them the name. So he justifies this character as being uh, almost the godfather of the Avengers, God or mother, Godmother. Almost, yeah. yeah. Well, she's the one of the original Avengers. Founding member, first female member. There's a lot of things going for the Wasp when you're considering who are the greatest Avengers. And she's remained a, an essential part of the team for a very long time. 
uh, I, I, I really feel like nine is a good spot for her because when you start to move down the list, you get to like characters who are necessarily more powerful or more essential, but while she has always kind of been like in the background, she's always been in the background. Like she's yeah. always been a part of the team. And yeah, I also find here. she brings a, a good stability and a realism. She always She's always number one advocate for whatever collateral damage might happen. Uh, she kind of keeps the Avengers in check, especially Ant-Man slash Giant Man or whatever. We'll get to him eventually. But she is almost like almost like the mother of everybody and kind of keeping them together and keeping them all intact and making sure that it's for the greater good, not the good of the team. So mm -hmm. I think number nine is a solid spot for yeah. her. I agree. I agree. Great. Right, everybody agrees. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, so coming in at number eight is The Vision, one, uh, another one of the OG Avengers. I feel like he merits his spot here at number eight. Uh, kind of overpowered, in my opinion, in terms that he is just a robot. He's not really a being from another planet, or that's all up to interpretation on mm. which storyline and which origin you're going with. But for me, I wouldn't say an overrated Avenger, but a, uh, an Avenger that I'm indifferent on. Andrew? I think a lot of people are sort of indifferent about Vision, period. Like when he was being introduced into the MCU, people were kind of like, really, you're going to Vision before you go to other characters? And something that we need to, I think, address is looking at the Avengers comics, like everybody has been an Avenger at some point. At some point, or we've another. Had... Like every, every Spider Man. Even I think is Wolverine an was part of the Avengers at yeah. one point. Of the, yeah. yeah, Wolverine was an Avenger at one point. Like it's a little bit. Silly. So, what are we talking about when we say top ten Avengers? Because if it's like core Avengers members who have been there for a long time, Vision has to be on the list. Yeah. yeah. But if we're looking at just every character who has ever been an Avenger, I don't think Vision is unfortunately anywhere near this list because of the indifference. And that's yeah. interesting. I think that kind of proves the angle of this list. It's not necessarily the best characters that have been Avengers. It's the best Avengers, and I think. Vision's history and longevity with the team kind of cements his spot on the list. But for then that reason. shouldn't Beast be an Avenger? Beast has been an Avenger since like the 70s. I think the, the thing with Beast and Wolverine is yes, they've been crucial members of the Avengers and for a long time, but when it comes to team affiliations, they're mostly thought of and for good reason as X-Men. Yeah, they're, they're X-Men first and like backup Avengers, I find. They're not really part of like Wolverine, the Wolverine, I agree, Beast, I don't know, Beast is pretty, if you read the comics, Beast is pretty heavily involved in the yeah, Avengers. Yeah, I think, I think you, you make a really solid point about Beast, and I think the only reason that he's so often not thought of as an Avenger is because people think of him as an X-Men character. Oh, yeah, but I'll give you, then I'll give you that. If, yeah. if we're like saying, if the Avengers has to be their main affiliation. Right, exactly. But then Black Panther is the king of Wakanda. Yeah, but Wakanda is not a superhero team. But then again, there are a lot of superheroes in Wakanda. There are plenty of Black Panthers. <laughs> His sister's been I a Black like Panther. I feel like this is top ten people who should be Avengers or have been Avengers. But then that's everybody, literally. And then like, I feel like that's a list for another time. Everybody. Norman yeah. Osborn's been an Avenger. You throw a stone <laughs> you know? in the Marvel universe, you hit an Avenger. Pretty much. Yeah. I think though this could be a conversation for a different type of video. Fair enough. So let's move on to entry number seven. Okay, so coming in at number seven uh, is Black Widow. Now, before we started this, in between takes, I was really adamant on how Black Widow should not be on this list. Because since we were basing this primarily on the comics, she is a kind of like, I'm on the team, not on the team, I'm good, I'm bad. She's really like wishy-washy, spy style. So she's not officially, well, she is and she isn't, right? Mm. Depends who's writing if they need her in that storyline. Fair. I think she's more on this list because of the popularity she took on by from the movies, from being in Iron Man 2, then yeah. the first Avengers. I have a comment here by Curicost. Black Widow should be placed number 20 as she has no powers. That's yeah. a bit hardcore. I don't know about it's that one. Harsh, but yeah, it's I a think bit harsh, if we really but... took a look at the people on this list that have no powers, Iron Man doesn't have any powers. Neither does Ant-Man. Ant-Man has no powers. The yeah. Wasp has no I don't think that instantly disqualifies but you. But she also has no... I think sort of what he means, though, she is has she no has gimmick. no thing yeah. besides just being able to kick people and electrocute them. But she's, like, really good at kicking people. And she's, she's also really good. good at shooting people. That's right. Yes. Right. And that's important. I mean, 
you know. I mean, another but she's entry. Not in any of these, but she's also like again, she's not in any of my like. I couldn't find any comic in my collection that had Black Widow as an Avenger. I might use this term a lot on this show. Is that she's officially unofficial Avenger, which means that she's part of the team when they need her to advance the story, and she's not part of the team when they don't need her. But then, if they need her to double cross someone, they'll throw her in the story. They've changed her character yes. arc a lot through the comics and because of her popularity on TV and whatever shows and whatever yeah. movies have come out. So she's become more of a normalized type of like Avenger and I want to do good. Mm -hmm. Where originally in the comics she was a bit of a out for herself type of character. She's a great character, but yeah. she's really out for herself. She's much more one. an anti-hero. Yeah, more of an anti-hero. And it kind of adds an interesting element to the dynamic of like the team when you have like a wild card like that join in. And I think this is like one of the few examples on this list of a character whose appearance in the MCU has like significantly affected their yeah. standing in the comics. Because in the 10 years, I mean, since Iron Man 2, I guess that's eight years that she's been introduced in the MCU, like her popularity her, and her stock in Marvel Comics has gone way up. So, like, more now than ever before, she's a significant character in Which a lot of arcs. also reflects how much influence the MCU has in totally, the comics. Totally, totally. Down to the way these characters are drawn to where they're kind of mimicking the features of the actors that yeah. play them, which yeah. I think is interesting. That's also changing the artwork. But uh, let's move on to entry number six. Yet another Avenger who's really good at shooting things and has no powers. Mm. Uh, another comic here from Lakers fan 24 Super reliable source. Hawkeye is useless. Why is he on this list? Tell us, Justin. Hawkeye is not useless. Exactly. He's got a pretty sweet bow and arrow. I right? Mean, that's one use that I just named off. Uh, Hawkeye, you know, in the MCU, they kind of took a lot of his charm away. Granted, a big purple suit would have been ridiculous. No one's arguing that. And you have to keep in mind that he's often been used as tragedy bait. Like, they'll kill off Hawkeye just to kill someone yeah, off in the comic. Yeah. He dies a lot. So I think I have a comic where he's dead, actually. Yeah, like, there, I think I brought one with me. There's, but you know, yeah. he's been used, like, kind of the same way as Coulson in the first Avengers movie, where it's like, freaking Hawkeye's dead, man. We got to figure this stuff out. Yeah. Um, and for that reason alone, I mean, even when he's alive, he's an essential member. But the fact that he's been able to unite the Avengers around his demise is a, a pretty significant thing in, in comics, I think. Well, he's not an OG member, but he's no. like, he was an Avenger exclusively for a long time. Yeah. Like, he was one of the Avengers. Which is part of the reason why really when time. they introduced him, they wanted him as a member of that core team. Like, in the MCU, he's a core member of the Avengers, a founding member. And I also think uh, in Age of Ultron, they kind of changed his standing and kind of brought back more of the comic book attributes where he's more of a, not really a smart ass, but he'll kind of tell you when you're wrong and he'll tell you, this is how things are. I kind of want to do my own thing, leave me alone. And I find they brought that back. Yeah. And a lot of that kind of spilled into Civil War with his appearance in Civil War where he's kind of like, okay, I'll help out Cap because I kind of can't stand Iron Man. Mm. So like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll come out of retirement. You know, the smart uh, quirks between yeah. him and Iron Man. They kind of brought some of his charm back. But I have to agree with you, with his appearance in Thor and then in the first Avengers, he was kind of like, a th like, hey, okay, here's a guy with bow and arrows. You know, yeah. like, here's a guy who shoots arrows. And they expanded and developed his character a bit. I think they, they kind of justified why he's there. Mm. But let's <laughs> move on to number five. <laughs> so in at number five, Ant-Man, a.k.a. Giant-Man, a.k.a. Yellow Jacket, originally in the comics. So uh, right off the bat, this isn't the right Ant-Man that, uh, nope. no. that we put on the list. The original Ant-Man we put on was uh, Hank, Hank Pym, Pym, who is the OG Ant-Man. Yeah. Who is, so, and who is the, like, much more associated with the character in the comic books. Big right. Way more. Yeah, Scott Lang more came in with uh, New Avengers, and he was well, like... Well, he was a, one of those, like, when they got rid of one, they bring in, you know, the yeah, same the, superhero, the one, but yeah. with a different, yeah, like different Flash, persona. they do it with him all the time. The reason yeah. they went with uh, Scott for the movies is because Hank Pym in the comics had a very controversial arc where yeah. he had uh, been uh, abusive towards his wife, the Wasp, uh, kind of soured his... Uh, P, it was a PR disaster for that character, so they really couldn't make a but movie But they brought it in the Ultimates. Like, they revived that storyline mm. in the Ultimates and made it even more hardcore. Yeah, they did. 
So they did. I feel like the Ultimates comic book series was more for them, like, let's experimentally try to push the envelopes of more grittier type of storylines. So it's like, let's have things that exist in the Ultimate storyline, mm. and then the original comics will exist separately. Marvel, right now, for me, uh, during their second overhaul right now, which is going on in the comics, where they're kind of re-overhauling everything again, yeah. is showing me that Marvel has really turned... Uh, all like their creative and best writers to the cinematic universe and the TV shows. There's not much left in the comics. There is some gems that are coming out, but mm. I really find that the cinematic universe is what's keeping Marvel afloat right now and also making everybody money. Yeah. So I feel like them revamping their comics again is really just another way to say, okay, so we took a direction. You guys don't like it. Cool. Let's. People let's, are pissed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, people are pissed. And now they're trying to reset it. But back to the list. Yeah, and so I would that. cut Ant-Man entirely. Wow. I'm not saying he's like, shouldn't be on the list, but top 10, because I think we need to find a p space for Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. Yes. She is so heavily involved in the Avengers, like now more than ever, but there's been a Captain Marvel on the Avengers uh, regardless of what form she takes, yes, yeah, yeah. Marvel, so really, really, exactly, Marvel, and I just and because of how much they're doing with Carol Danvers in the comics, like she's kind of she's a leader of the Avengers from time to time. I think she needs to be on the list, and Ant Man is the one I would cut to make I'll room take. for Carol Danvers. Interesting. So we're getting into our top four now, and we all know who are in the top four. Yeah, uh, let's yeah. see if we agree uh, on where they're sitting. Number four, the Incredible Hulk. I am a fan of this. I grew up watching the TV show. I have read Planet Hulk, and I have read Hulk vs. the Wolverine. So Neither of those are Avengers comics. None of those are Avengers comics. Uh, is he a key member of the group? Yes. Kind of. Is he a good member of the group? No. No. Uh, that is my... Uh, no. Yeah, it's like pretty much uh, sicking a rabid pit bull in a group of bad guys and hoping that only the bad guys get bit. That is, my, um, that is my take on the Hulk. I know it is a hot take, but yeah, he's fun to watch. He's fun to read. It's always cool to watch him smash stuff. So Justin, while uh, Andrew does his research here. He's flipping, <laughs> through the, fl 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 flipping through the stacks. I think that the Hulk is very important for the simple superhero trope of you got to have superheroes fight each other sometimes. And it's yeah. really easy to convince the audience or the reader that we need to fight the Hulk. Well, that's it's like, Avengers number one. And? The, the movie and the comic book yeah, is them fighting the Hulk before he becomes a member. Right. And Avengers in Age of Ultron, we got another, we got to fight the Hulk scene with the Hulkbuster. Like, it's really just part of the DNA of this team is, yes, we have like a super powerful being on our side, but like sometimes we're just going to have to put him down. We got to have to, and that's, you know, that's drama. That's conflict. I love it. It's I great. get it. I disagree that that is a good like stomping ground to put him up at number four. Mm. I think his pop his popularity is what got him up to number four. Fair. His usefulness, Andrew, you seem to disagree. I, I just I think the Hulk is fantastic at number four, and I think he's so important to the team that I wouldn't touch him. Yeah, I think the I think the top four is pretty undisputable. It's just the order in which you place them. And I'm very comfortable with the Hulk being... Uh... But would you take the Hulk off the list entirely? No, not at all. Would I not take the all. Hulk oh. off the list? No, I wouldn't take him off the list. Would I put him at number four? Is he one of the strongest Avengers? Yes. Is he cool? Yes. But is he useful and one of the best Avengers? Does he bring a lot to the team besides being able to smash everything and destroy whatever bad guys put in front of them? Or in the case of the movies, whatever CGI army is put in front of them? Yeah. I don't know. I'll tend to disagree. I would have put him a bit lower uh, and maybe made space for Captain Marvel. That's my hot take. So let's move on to number Very three. Very hot, Manny. So at number three, we've got the mighty Thor. He's mighty. He is mighty. Yes, he is a god. I, sh I mean, I could maybe argue for him being one or two, but I definitely think he belongs in the top three. And I mean, the I've got it here somewhere. So... Okay, so Avengers Prime, this is a comic book that took place after Siege, and it was sort of reuniting them, and okay. it's like the, the prime Avengers are Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. Uh, so I've got Brian Michael Bendis back me up on this, yeah. to say that one, two, and three should be Captain America. Iron DC Man, has their Thor. trinity, yeah. Batman, 
Wonder Woman, and Superman. Marvel, when it comes to the Avengers, has their trinity. It's Thor, it's Captain America, it's Iron Man. Thor is probably, for me, like the most interesting character, especially recently in the comics. Uh, there's they some have really interesting, arc a lot. really interesting stuff going on. But he's never gone anywhere. Like even though he's not Thor anymore, the character, right? Still, they didn't get rid of him. Yeah, and like old King Thor is an arc that's going on right now. It's great. Oh, it's super good. There's some really, really good. really good stuff going on, and like, I don't know. He's just such a fascinating introduction and way into the Marvel universe. I find because they're pulling from mythology yeah. and they're pulling on. Something that's both fantasy and science fiction with those old Jack Kirby comics. I just think Thor's awesome. I'm super content with this being number three. I have nothing to say. I think we're all. Uh, oh, I thought, all I, thought, in I, thought, I thought I was ready to fight. I thought we were fighting. Yeah. No, I oh, think no, we okay. can all agree on Thor <laughs> oh, being cool. number three. We can all relax. Great. Yeah, let's move on to number two. So coming in at number two is the Invincible Iron Man, the perhaps Batman of the Marvel world or equivalent, mm -hmm. uh, with a drinking problem. Yep. I think his place at number two is pretty obvious, why he's number two, uh, which obviously gives away our number one, but then again, it's in the graphics on the side of the panel, so... Uh, no surprises here. The guy no who's surprises on every here. single cover of every He's on every cover, Avengers. yeah. So, for me, Iron Man has one of the most interesting character arcs as a comic book character. Uh, I like what they did with him in the movies. I feel like some of our fans will disagree that he should be number one due to his popularity from the movies. But that just goes to show you when Marvel can take a B-level character and turn him into an A-lister because of what they did with that. I think you're right in saying that he used to be a B-level character. I think that if you told people, hey, there's an Iron Man movie coming out in like the early 2000s, a lot of people would have just been like, who's that? Yeah. What's that guy all about? Uh, I personally think Iron Man is the best Avenger. I would have put him a bit higher. The only higher spot he could have gone. Uh, I think he's just the core. He's not necessarily the leader of the team, but in a lot of ways, he's like represents the reader's perspective a lot of times because he's like so analytical and skeptical and intelligent and just all the things that you want out of a out of a like powerless hero to make that dark, uh, Batman comparison again. He's just like the smartest guy on the team a lot of the times. Uh, the other, other examples of smart guys would be Hank Pym, obviously, Bruce Banner. But when it comes to like really reliable and funny, don't forget hilarious members of the Avengers, I don't think you can go wrong with Iron Man. What you're saying makes sense and I have a comment here. Great. That I think kind of backs up what you're saying. So let me read it. So Michael Schweller, I think that Iron Man is, in, is more important than Captain America. Cap is like the leader, but Iron Man is the one that provides all the badass tech, funds, crap loads of stuff. Iron Man is the most knowledgeable and think he should be higher than Cap on this list. Gonna have to ag agree with my boy in the comments. <laughs> the other okay. thing to note, you know, Iron Man was there from the start. Took Cap a couple issues to get in on the action, but, but uh, Iron Man was there with his big gray ugly suit before he got the upgrade, so. Interesting. Andrew, I see you shaking your head a lot. I see you shrugging your shoulders over there. What's <laughs> going on? What's going on through you? What's, what's, uh, what's the haps? I think your arguments are valid. Thank you. I but I think that. they're also wrong. Okay. I think Iron Man is really good at number two, but to put him above Cap, it just it doesn't really make sense. All right. Like, Cap is the okay, Avenger. We're, we're I can jumping see, the gun here. I can see both sides. Let's, all, let's get to Cap. Let's so talk let's, Cap. Let's just get over there. Yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm let's sorry. get there. So number one, we left nothing to the imagination. Shocking. Shocking with the graphics constantly being up on screen. <laughs> Captain America, the number one Avenger. I am 100% behind this. Justin, your thoughts. I'm not mad about it. I'm, I, I totally understand it. Cap is a fascinating character. And we were talking earlier about how some people might not give him the respect he deserves because they hear Captain America. He sounds like a Boy Scout. He sounds like... Not that interesting. But in the comics, he's always been like way more fascinating of a character than his name would suggest. And I think you guys would agree. Yeah. We all agree about that. Especially Andrew, from the 90s and onwards. Before I give you the floor and let you speak your piece about the captain, okay. I will read a comment here from Charles Stiles. Interesting name. Great name. Why is everyone hating on Cap? 
He's the actual leader of all the Avengers, and Iron Man would make a terrible leader. His ego would cause more problems than we'll be able to solve, which we've seen clearly in the movies. They play that up. Andrew, why do you think Cap is the more superior Avenger to Iron Man? Because Captain America is willing to adapt and change his politics. He's let go of the suit from time to time. He's given other people the suit from time to time. Uh, and I think that that's what the Avengers sort of need, and that's what the Avengers are supposed to be. They're not an American team. They're Marvel's team. And Iron Man, I don't think... At, by, by design, his character doesn't adapt as much as Cap does, and I think his inflexibility just pushes him into number two, not number one, because he's not the hero that the Avengers need. I've said this before uh, on this channel, and I've gotten a lot of flack for it. I think in the movies, they've indirectly made Iron Man the leader, even though it's supposed to be Cap. Mm. And I feel like a lot of people will classify that as, or justify that, that that's why Iron Man is the best Avenger. Just because he was the first one that kicked off the cinematic universe and made all this happen, which is why we're doing this. Here we are 10 years later. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and the movies are doing good. They're going very strong. They're making boatloads of money for Disney. Uh, I do think that at the beginning, Captain America's character may have not been handled in the best way, but we've seen that arc that we saw in the comics come to fruition in the movies, which justify why he is the best person to be the leader and how, like you said before, he's not just about the country. We see a lot of that in Winter Soldier, how they changed it. And we've seen a lot of that with like, the actual Winter Soldier storyline in the comics when that happened up to... Uh, Death of Captain America, where he comes back and then he decides not to be Captain America anymore because he doesn't believe in it. I think, you know, I've argued a lot for Iron Man as the best Avenger. I think if there's a moment that speaks to the reason that Captain America should at least be the leader of the Avengers is the final scene of the Civil War arc in the comics where Cap notices the destruction and chaos that the fight between the superheroes has caused and he gives himself in to prevent any further damage or you know, casualties of war to civilian life. Cap is always willing to put the good of the many over his personal interests. And I think when you're looking at superheroes and the morals you wanna see reflected in those superheroes, he's like kind of a perfect example of that. I think so. And on that note, I shall believe we shall end this episode of Deconstructed. Let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know if you love us. Let us know if you hate us, if you agree, if you disagree. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. And uh, we'll see you next time. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.